CDC Director Robert Redfield, who has his own history of bungled COVID communications, is now reportedly taking out his frustrations on the newest COVID task force member. In a phone call overheard by NBC News, Dr. Redfield allegedly lashed out at Dr. Scott Atlas, saying everything he says is false. According to NBC, Redfield suggested that Atlas was giving Trump, quote, misleading data about a range of issues, including the efficacy of masks, COVID's effect on young people, and herd immunity. Late tonight, Dr. Fauci decided to join in on the Atlas bashing. The CDC director is concerned that Dr. Scott Atlas is sharing misleading information with President Trump. Are, are you also concerned about that happening? Well, yeah, I'm concerned that sometimes things are said that are, are really taken either out of context or are actually incorrect. Are the medical voices on the task force working together or working against each other? Well, most are working together. I, I think you know the, what the outlier is. And we welcome to our show, apparently the outlier, White House COVID advisor, Dr. Scott Atlas, joins me now to respond. Dr. Atlas, thank you for joining us tonight. I thought having opposing voices Thanks, is part of the kind of, it's kind of part of the scientific process, is it not? Especially about an issue that has so many tentacles um, coming out of it, like this COVID deal. Why are they so threatened by you? Well, you know, thanks, Laura, for having me. You know, I, I think that this is all, uh, if, it, if what that says is uh, was really said, it's, it's all about delegitimizing the president and feeding into some kind of a false narrative that the president doesn't listen to the science or the scientists. Because the reality is I, I've been, I was called in because I can translate the medical science into public policy. Uh, and I advise the president uh, to do things like uh, which, which he's doing, which is to do everything he can to protect the vulnerable, to open schools and open society, and to make sure hospitals are not overcrowded. And of course, this is the right policy. It may not be the policy that everyone agrees with, but it happens to be exactly the policy in concert with most of the many of the world's leading uh, epidemiologists and infectious disease people, like doctors Koldorf and Yi at Harvard, doctors Bhattacharya and Ioannidis at Stanford, doctors Gupta and Hennigan at Oxford University. I think that's pretty good company for the president. He clearly listens to a lot of people. He understands in a, a very common sense way Way, uh, what the science shows and what should be done to save the American, uh, really American lives. And that's why I'm here. I'm not here to make friends. You know, I mean, there are certain experts that say what I just said, which is vulnerable people protection and save lives by also opening up society safely. And there are other experts that say things like, no, you shouldn't wear masks to yes, you should wear masks to hey, a mask is better than a vaccine. Or a ma uh, some other expert might say, no, you shouldn't wear masks, and then change to, yes, we should wear masks, and then, oh, everyone should wear goggles. You're not going to hear me say that, but the president <laughs> has a choice of experts to listen to. Yeah. Well, Dr. Fauci um, doesn't think the U.S. is headed right now in the right direction. Watch. You said the U.S. needed to get to 10,000 cases per day to be on, to get some control over this virus. Well, right now, we are averaging more than 40,000 new cases a day. How would you describe where we are as a nation right now? Yeah. Well, we're not in a good place with regard to what I had said back. Well, Dr. Alice, the CDC released new data showing that ER visits for COVID and COVID-like illnesses are nearly back to the baseline from a year ago. Now, ER visits for influenza-like illnesses are below baseline from a year ago. Deaths from pneumonia, influenza, COVID-19, almost back to the seasonal baseline. So th this is data. That's the CDC's own data. That's so right. where is the disconnect? I mean, I'm not a scientist. I'm not trying to be, but I can read a graph pretty well. <laughs> so what's, what are the people missing? Well, you know, there's more data that corroborates what you said, which is that hospitalizations are down uh, to basically nearly the lowest level since March for COVID. Uh, deaths, deaths per week are down uh, something like 50% from its peak in July and far, uh, very, very low down toward what it was in March, April, before the peak in March, April. 
And you, just like you said, the sick people coming to the emergency room are down to something like 1.6% of all ER visits. So yes, there's a lot of things going right. And I think, yes, we will see more cases especially if you test on college campuses. We just put in another 50,000 cases, which are really uh, pe the, the people at that age do not have a significant problem typically with this. But if you start looking at uh, states that are opening, like North Dakota, South Dakota, uh, the, the virus had not been there before. And so we're going to get cases. The key here is that cases are not the most important metric. That's thinking that is back in March when we didn't know what we were doing here. Now we know that most people don't have a significant problem here. The key is protect the high risk people so that people don't die, do everything you can, double down like the president just did with his announcement about these very uh, state of the art tests being sent to senior centers, not just nursing homes, but all seniors trying to protect them from people who come in with an infection or to stop hospitals overcrowding, which we do not have, and yeah. to open society because prolonged lockdowns are destroying families, actually killing people nightmare. from skip medical care, all kinds of things happening. Doctor, and this is why I'm here because public policy counts for the virus as well as the policy they want itself. You out. And the but president Dr. Atlas, knows that. Dr. Atlas, they want you out. It's obvious. You're the skunk at the picnic, okay? They want you gone. They had their I've little thing going. I've never been called going. that before, Laura. Sorry, but I, you know, it's it's a, it's a Stanford <laughs> thing. You wouldn't understand. Um, okay, just one one <laughs> final one final thing. This is from the CDC today. I guess their new guidelines for the holiday season. No fun is allowed. The CDC is recommending against attending Thanksgiving parades, large indoor gatherings. But then it continues going to pumpkin patches and orchards where hand sanitizer is used, masks are worn, and social distancing uh, is kept are also moderately risky. So no pumpkin patch either this year, Dr. Atlas, apparently, according to the CDC and Dr. Redfield. Yeah, I, I, well, I can't really speak to the CDC's listings. I mean, that's Dr. Redfield's uh, domain, and sometimes they put up listings and they change them. Sometimes they put up listings and they take them down. And so I'm not sure how long this listing will be up there. But I think it is appropriate to use social mitigation, hand washing. We have to do everything we can to protect the vulnerable, particularly when there's a lot of cases. So we should take it seriously. Uh, and, you know, it's very dangerous for people in the high risk category. But I'm not sure if pumpkin patches themselves are considered high risk. Dr. Atlas, it's so great to see you tonight. Thank you so much. Okay. Thanks. And coming up, bye.